Okay, now we're going to do the ethmoid bone. Ethmoid bone's kind of weird for you guys. I'm not sure why, but it just looks kind of like a strange little bone. And the way it sits in the skull is like this. Okay, so it sits really kind of uh, underneath the frontal bone and back a little bit. So it would be right here, although it's too high. It'd have to be inside the skull more. You can see part of the ethmoid here, just this little portion ah, of the ethmoid, which is just this part right up on top. And that part is called the Christigalli, that little sail that sticks up. And it's coxcomb, so it looks like that little thing on a rooster. So that's the Christigalli, and there's several different views that you should be able to identify that, and I'll show you some on another video, but that's the Christigalli, and on either side of the Christigalli is a bony plate that has a lot of holes in it, and it's called the cribiform plate, and all the little holes are olfactory foramen, where your olfactory receptors come into the olfactory bulb. This skull is really nice because it has those kind of highlighted in black. So you can see the Christigalli right here in the middle. And then on either side, you can see lots of little pinholes. And those little pinholes, I think I'm too close. Those little pinholes are your um, olfactory foramen, or foramina for plural. The thing that they are actually sitting on, the bone that they're in, is the cribiform plate. So the cribiform plate is like a cheese grater and the olfactory foramina are like the holes where the cheese comes out. Okay, so cribiform plate with olfactory foramina and the Christigalli. The two large masses of the ethmoid are called lateral masses and right in between those two you have this piece of bone that cuts the lateral masses perpendicularly called the perpendicular plate. Okay, you can see that little bone right there, right down the middle, perpendicular plate. This is the orbital surface. This is the part you can see in the orbit of the eye. So like if we look at this guy, you can see that yellow right there. That's the ethmoid bone, the orbital plate of the ethmoid. You have some concha on this bone. You had the inferior nasal concha, which is the lowest bone, so it would be down here inside the nose and the concha serve to make turbulence in the air as you breathe in to make it warmer and put some water in it. So the this would be middle nasal concha and this would be superior nasal concha. Inferior would be down here, middle nasal concha here, superior nasal concha here. Split by the perpendicular plate right here. You can see that in the back and here in the front. And we can even see some of the perpendicular plate right here in the nose, right there in the middle. Okay, so that's ethmoid. It's really not too bad. Okay, now we're going to look at the maxilla and the mandible. So we're doing facial bones now. So here's half of a maxilla. Obviously, you'd have a matching half over here. Okay, so you can see it right there. Notice that this part goes up and touches the frontal bone. This part goes back and touches the zygomatic bone. And you have a flat part that helps make up the bony orbit. So this right here would be the frontal process of the maxilla. This would be the zygomatic process of the maxilla. This is the orbital surface of the maxilla. Right here around the teeth, kind of like that gum line, is called the alveolar margin. You have this on the mandible as well. And that's just that bony ridge along the teeth. You have a little pointy structure right here at the base of the nose, midline. That's called the anterior nasal spine. You can see it on this guy too, right there. <laughs> you have a hole here underneath the infraorbital margin, which is right here. It makes up the lower portion of that bony orbit. And you have an infraorbital foramen. So there's a hole here. Infraorbital margin, like the rim of a cup. Infraorbital foramen is the hole. If we look at the mandible from the inside, you can see there's a big opening inside this bone. That's your sinus. So that's maxillary sinus. And you can see the hard palate here. 
So this is going to be part of that hard palate when you rub your tongue up against the top of your mouth. Same thing we saw here. Okay, it's called the palatine process because at the back of this thing, it touches the palatine bone. So here's maxilla, here's palatine bone. Palatine process of the maxilla helps make up the palate, hard palate, along with the palatine bone. The incisive fossa is this little canal. I don't know how well it's going to show up here, but there's a little canal right here, right behind the incisors. That's why it's called incisive fossa. It goes up through the hard palate. You can see it on this guy right here. Here's your maxilla palatine process, and here's a hole. Okay, so it's right behind those incisor teeth, incisive fossa. But this is how it would look like sideways in a mid-sagittal cut. I'll look at the mandible next, lower jaw. You have, an in, you have an alveolar margin on the mandible as well, ridge of bone, that gum line right along the teeth. Mandible has three basic parts. You've got the body, you've got the angle, which is this turn here, and you've got the arm. On the body, you have these two bumps in the front called the mental protuberance, and you have holes on either side called the mental foramen. So you can see that there, mental protuberance, mental foramen, that's all on the body. Here's the angle of the jaw, here's the arm. On the arm, you can notice two processes here. This one is called your condylar process because it has a condyle on it that fits inside that condylar fossa on the temporal bone. You have a coronoid process here. And then you have a mandibular notch in between the two. So the whole thing is the arm, the ramus, coronoid process, mandibular condyle, mandibular notch. We look on the inside of the mandible. You can see a hole here and here, kind of angling down the arm. That is called your mandibular foramen. Mandibular foramen. The mandibular symphysis is just the union of the two sides of the mandible here, mandible here in the front. Okay, now we're going to kind of look at some miscellaneous stuff and some put-together skulls and kind of review some of this stuff. This is a sinus model. Shows you all the bony spaces in the skull. These are frontal sinuses. This is the sphenoidal sinus here. Maxillary sinus in pink. These are ethmoid sinuses. And these are called mastoid air cells. Very, very neat depiction of how all of those allergies can cause so much pain. Those spaces in the bones get full of fluid and cause all kinds of pressure and it's extremely painful to some people. So if you've ever had a sinus infection, that's what's getting clogged up with fluid is those bony spaces. <coughs> Let's take a look at this guy from this view to look at some of these structures that are kind of prominent. Again, this is the orbital plate of the frontal bone. This is the cristigalli of the ethmoid bone. Cribiform plate with olfactory foramina of the ethmoid bone. Lesser wing of the sphenoid bone. Greater wing of the sphenoid bone. Hypophyseal fossa in the cella tersica. This is petrous region of the temporal bone. And this is the occipital bone, foramen magnum down here. Anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa, posterior cranial fossa. We can see the optic canal here. You can see the foramen rotundum, foramen ovale, foramen spinosum. One we didn't see on an individual bone because you can only see this on a, on a skull put together is this hole right here, or the foramen lacerum. Okay, so it's on either side of that body of the sphenoid bone. 
can also see on this guy this large hole down here next to the foramen magnum on either side and that's called the jugular foramen. Let's see if we can see that better over here. Okay, so here's your foramen magnum. It's very hard to see on this guy. Let's turn that around. So let's see, frame and magnum, yeah, or jugular frame, and yeah, you can see that here. Frame and oval, spinosum. That's your uh, carotid canal. Frame and lacerum. Mastoid process, occipital condyles, styloid processes here. And here, here's your pterygoid process of the sphenoid bone, medial plate, lateral plate, bomer, horizontal plate of the palatine bone, palatine process of the maxilla.